What's going on guys? All right, so if you clicked on this video, more than likely you're having a problem with your garage door uh, not opening or not closing or something. Anyways, mine itself would not open, okay, because uh, I had a broken spring in it. Now, when I went on YouTube and looked, there was a bunch of videos on how to replace springs, but not on the style of garage door that I have, which is this one you're looking at right here. And it is a Torque Master Plus. So if you clicked on the video, you're in a lot because I'm gonna show you how to replace the springs in yours. Now I've already actually done it, but I need to pull it down and redo it again because I actually installed the springs in the wrong sides. That being said, here's one of the springs right here. Hopefully you can see that. And it is broke. See that right there? And there's one of the other springs. It is broken half. So, and if you're new to the channel, do me a favor and check that out. Normally I do car videos, but I figured, heck, why not? Let's just go ahead and do a garage door video because really I couldn't find anything good on showing me how to do this. And I actually did it wrong, but I messed around with it so much that I can show you how to do it right. I can show you how to unwind it, I can show you how to wind it, and I can show you how to replace the springs and deal with the whole freaking thing now that I have to do it twice. So, uh, if you think you have a broken spring, more than likely you can't lift the garage open. You're gonna need to disconnect the opener. You know, this garage here weighs 130 pounds. Uh, when you go to order springs for your garage door, I'll let you go, I'll go ahead and tell you this right now, that uh, don't wait and do what I did is I actually pulled all this down and pulled the springs out and try to use the part numbers that are on the end of these springs. That ain't gonna help you. The way you order the springs are is you actually need to tell them how big the garage door is and how much it weighs and you can order the springs, okay? <clears throat> so you can go ahead and do that before you even pull it down, okay? You can go ahead, like I used a little bathroom scale here, lifted it up, threw it under there, 130 pounds, seven foot door, up and down, order the springs two springs there's one there's a right side and a left side and I actually put them in wrong okay and I don't know if you can see up there that red thing right there one spring has a red end and the other spring has like a gray end and I looked at the instructions for a second the new springs come with really good instructions and I automatically assumed that red and right uh, were gonna be the right side but that's not the case the red spring actually goes in the left side and uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it down and fix it. So go ahead and show you how to do that real quick. So if you wanna unwind the springs, more than likely you'll have one of these that are broken. Make sure I have the GoPro where I want it. <clears throat> and your, your deal looks like this. I'm gonna stop there for a minute. Most of the videos I saw were the, the spring type that where you could actually see that weren't inside this tube. <clears throat> and it pretty much looks like it's gonna kill you. Um, this style here, you can work on yourself. It's not really gonna hurt you because everything is contained in here. So, uh, first thing you wanna do is you wanna come over here and you're gonna flick this little switch up. Okay, when you do that, that means you can wind and unwind this guy, all right? And just take note of how everything kind of looks. You have a cable, there's a little adjusting screw here. You can see how the cable rides in this wheel right here. Uh, all this is kind of bolted together with a bolt here and there's a bolt here that goes into the wall And then on the other side This is actually the end of the spring and you're going to use a socket and a ratchet To actually unwind and wind it now The size ratchet or the size socket I'm using is a 5 8 Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stick that on here now And what I want to do is I want to unwind this guy <clears throat> Which sounds pretty scary, but it's not too bad so this is the operating uh, position right here. This is the you know maintenance position, I guess you could say. So you're gonna wanna grab your ratchet and hold on to it, all right? And you're gonna set your ratchet up where it goes clockwise, okay? You're gonna go ahead and push down on it clockwise, all right? You can feel the tension in it. You're just gonna push it a little bit, then you can go ahead and press right here. And you're gonna press then you're gonna let the ratchet, the ratchet wants to shoot off that way. It's not really too bad, but it wants to just jump this way. If I let go of it, it'll hit the wall. Let's go as high as you can with it. Let go of the button, okay? And then you'll see it kind of stops. There's a ratcheting mechanism in here that 
uh, stops it from just exploding on you, okay? And then you're gonna undo the ratchet, and I'm gonna switch it back, okay? We put a little bit of tension, hit the button, let it go back up, let go, okay? I'm gonna flick the little switch on the ratchet so I can come all the way back here with it. All right, and I'm gonna put some tension on it. You can see how I'm pushing on it now. Push the button, and then, wee, okay? That, it's, you're just gonna do that until all the tension in the spring is gone, okay? You do that on the other side also. It's the same exact thing. Um, so, uh, uh, right from the get-go, um, I just want to say that, like my garage here, this spring has been wound 16 times. That means it's, it's been done 16 revolutions. So I know I'm going to have to turn this thing at least 16 times. It's going to take me 16 times. This thing's got to spin around. So I'm just going to cut the video off now. Unwind these guys just like that. I'll show you one more time. All the way down. Set the ratchet up. Put some tension on it. Hit the button. Now once it come up, let go. Okay, and I'm just gonna keep doing that till I get super loose and do both sides. I wanna say one more thing. Uh, when you go to do this, you'll find out which side of the spring's actually broken because you won't have this tension right here. The spring will be broke and it won't, it'll just spin around. So you don't have to un try to unwind a side that has a broken spring because it's not gonna unwind. All right, check this out. I've been unwinding it for a minute. I'm just gonna show you maybe I know when I was watching some videos, it's kind of a little hard to, you can't really see the tension in the spring, but maybe this will kind of help some people out. Um, so I'm set the ratchet up where um, it's gonna go clockwise. So I'm pushing clockwise with the tension, hit the button, and it wants to go by itself, and I'll just show you it hit the wall. Okay, so it hits the wall. What you can do is let go of the button. It has a racketing me me mechanism in it, so you can hear it. it's not It's not wanting to jump anymore. Flip the little lever, come all the way back down. Flip the lever again, get a few clicks out of it. Push it, push it. Okay. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. All right, so you can feel the cable, feel this getting pretty loose. Okay. Once you get it, it's not, this one's not all the way unwound yet, but you can feel it getting loose. What you can do is, is when you, you can go ahead and pull the ratchet out and it will unwind it. All right, see. Okay, so everything's spring tension is nice and loose and it's gone. Your next step is you're gonna want to disconnect the cable that goes all the way down to the bottom of the garage. And you can go ahead and um, loosen up these screws right here. This is just, you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver for that. And one thing to note is that this tube is not just a round tube, it's actually like a teardrop shape. And uh, it's actually shaped where it kind of pinches in like this. You're gonna want that facing, and we're gonna want facing here. Should have a label on the left side. Again, it gives you a bunch of information, but you can't use it to order any parts. It's kind of crazy. But go ahead and loosen this set screw here. And this will take the tension off this cable, okay? I'm gonna try to kind of leave it together because I don't want to take too much of it apart, but you do want to loosen, you can loosen it up a little bit. You can do that on both sides. I'm gonna take this bolt out here and this bolt out right here. Okay, you gotta take this whole latching mechanism off. Oh, while well, we're in the middle, this bracket right here needs to be bent out of the way, okay? So you can actually lift the middle out. I've already done this side. Take these guys apart. I'm trying to 
have to kill myself. Nasty long bolt. And of course it's two different sizes. See how it comes apart. All right. I guess I'll just leave that guy there. Anyways, there's not too much to this. Okay, just don't get them mixed up. Yeah, so if you're new to the channel, uh, yeah, check out the channel. Uh, I usually do a lot of automotive repair, but I do do a little bit of home improvement, I guess you can say. There might be something on my channel that you might be interested in, so. And again, uh, if this helps you out in any way, do me a favor and just, you know, hit that thumbs up button. That helps this video get to the top of the YouTube search when people are searching or, uh, you know, ways to fix their, their stuff. Hopefully this video is a little better than what's out there. Hopefully it really helps you out. You can save yourself some money on fixing stuff like this, okay? Because the, the spring set itself only set me back $129. But if you're gonna have someone come out and do this for you, they might charge you anywhere from $200 to $300 with a labor, just the labor. So, saving yourself a couple hundred bucks on the labor. So, this thing's ready to come down now. And if you had, you know, two people, it'd be a lot easier. But I don't. So, just grab it and just lift it right out. So well, it's being held in with that cable now. We're gonna have to do something with the cables. <sighs> now the first time I did it, I disconnected the cable down at the bottom, which is kind of a pain in the rear. So, but you can do it right here, like this. Okay. So this piece just slides right off. I mean, that did the ground over there. Slides right off. Get a hammer real quick. And you just bang it right off. Okay. Right. Get this off to the side. And later on, well, you'll see why I. Loosen up the set screw because you're gonna have to mess with it a little bit. This guy. This is actually the spring right here. This guy. I just don't want it to fall. show you what you're working with here so it's really long so you're gonna have to move it around in your garage all crazy so what I need to do is I need to switch the springs around but what you need to do probably is pull out your spring and replace it so it's gonna be the same thing like this is my broken one here and when you order new, your new springs they're gonna be different 
Like this one actually has a rod in it. Okay, and with your new one, it actually says that it's not gonna come with that. And the springs will be different lengths than these guys. And they are, they're actually a lot shorter. But where I messed up here, is with the instructions, it says left hand spring, right hand spring. Well, I put the red one, which is, I put it in the right one. So I'm fixing that right now. So these instructions are actually really, really good, but I don't really like to read instructions, but you know, they come in the, uh, come in the kit, come in the, the spring kit, I guess. I'll leave a link where I, where I actually got the springs at. So you can just go ahead and order from there. They're actually, you know, 120 bucks. Not too bad. But like this one here, I'm going to be able to just pull this one out. All right. And there is this sleeve in here. Okay. And there's the spring. So this is actually the right hand side spring. All right. And so I need to get the left one out. <laughs> and I got to jiggle, jiggle this guy out of here. All right. And beat everything up in your garage. Get it out. Boom. And that's it. There's your springs. There's my new springs. Now this sleeve was inside the tube. All right. And I just, I end up having to cut it down to fit the new springs. Because the new springs, again, a different length. If you look, this is not the same length at all. And it says it in the instructions that they're not going to be the same length. So I had to actually cut the tube. There's the other half of the tube. It's this tube. And I think what this does is actually uh, cancel some of the noise. So put this back on here. Okay, here's my right hand spring and you can see how this is shaped. It's like cammed, goes in. I hope to God you can see this on the GoPro. All right, so is this sleeve is cammed too. Get it jammed in there. All right. Okay, and, and try to leave it hanging out, okay? Because it will, since it's shorter, it will go down the tube and you will not get it back. What I suggest is, um, you can use some zip ties like this, okay? And that'll prevent you from losing the spring down the tube. Hopefully you got that. Do the other side now. I got all the kids' bikes in the way. <laughs> Left side here. And the spring. Cam. Okay, you know what? Let me go get my phone to make sure it's getting on video because it would suck if it wasn't. Get it? Yeah, I'm getting it. Okay, cool. I'll check that out. Make sure it's all good. Force this fucker back in here. This is a little, a little bit more difficult. Trust me, you want to use the zip ties. All right. Let me just lift it back up there and 
put it back together. And I'll show you how to tighten everything up and compress the springs back. All right, kind of got the ladder in position. Red goes on left, gray goes on right. I'm gonna get this done right. You know, left is the side that has the label. If you're dealing with the same brand, pull bolting, stick it up there. And you are dealing with some humongous ass crap. So get it up there. This is a Wayne Dalton's garage door and garage door stuff. So, I need to get this under here. Oh, let me, and bring it back. Yeah. Okay, it's gonna hang out over here, Mr. Pole, and then we'll put it back together. Whew. Yeah, so hopefully this is the best garage door video you will ever find on this setup. Uh, I try to make my automotive videos the same way where you can do it at home. No problem. Been in the automotive uh, industry for like over 20 years. And you know, I work on commission, so everything has to be, be done. Like I try to do everything the most efficient way. And, uh, and yeah. Um, so what you want to do now is put this back on the way it came off. If you look, it's cammed also, All right? And I gotta cut the zip ties off before I do that. But I think I want the bracket somewhere near me. Give me a second here. And this thing really doesn't consist of much. Bracket screw. Try not to drop it. Man, man, okay, I'll cut this off. I had some big old snips a second ago, and I don't know where they went. Oh, those worked okay. Okay, get this guy, and so it's gonna go back on like this. I know they go one way, so. On. You gotta watch out, the spring is gonna wanna take off in there. I wanna try to get it to come out through this hole. Okay, and there it is here. Okay, and it's actually this little slot here is where it's gonna go here. Okay, I'm gonna make sure this cable's on the right side. And I'm just gonna kinda put it where it wants to go now. Kind of in the vicinity of where it needs to go. Uh, Make sure I try not to lose. Okay, that's not in all the way. I think. No. It doesn't need to be in all the way, but. Okay, now that's all the way. Oh, to God, the GoPro got that. But make sure the cable is chilling like it was. When you start it, and remember this teardrop cam, it's the pointy part, you're gonna want it up. Okay. I'm gonna leave this here for now, go to the other side. Hopefully I don't drop any of this stuff. So I can try to get that back where it needs to go. Now, this will move. Oh. Come on, there we go. Okay. It's, it's probably gonna have to come off again. Get back over here. Yada yada yada. Okay. And go over here, cut this guy off. Back on. 
Uh, it's it's like January, February, March. It's like February right now. And I live in Southern Texas. And all I can say is thank God it's not 150 degrees outside. It's only 60 degrees outside right now. Cause it was summertime. Whoo, be sweating up a storm. So in the comments, man, if you're watching this, just leave me a comment too. That helps the video out a lot. Let me know where you're from, what your, what your problems are. Just any kind of comment at all will help this video. So hopefully it's helping you out, help me out, help everyone out. Slide this bastard back on here like so. Drop it in the slot. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Now you're gonna wanna make sure that this is for the cable that you are lined up in the first one. Now the instructions will say that you kind of want to cam this thing and cam it where it's facing up. You might want to go around twice, but it's only going to kind of go around a halfy for me right here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bracket back on. Grab the bracket. Not a problem. Everything you need. Power tools make things go fast. Okay. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Don't drop everything. That was close. All right. I'm trying to remember how this went. This can fall out. Don't let it fall out. There's really not a lot to this. But spring. This is going to go in the hole. You can feel it kind of go where it needs to go. Everything lines up. The wall bolt back inside the wall. Okay. And then this guy here. Which way this guy was facing? Huh? This way. Oh. I just got lucky I didn't lose that one. This way. I think it was the other way. Make it easy on myself. Alright. Put it on there. Okay, which one is this? This is the wall one. Yeah, I'll zip it on. Alright. Switch socket, it's gonna be different sizes. Alright. Go and do the other side now exactly the same. Gotta check make sure the camera's pointing where I need it, where I want it. I have this camera, this is actually a GoPro. That's a GoPro 7. These things are awesome, dude. Um, it's in the super view mode, so everything gets kind of fisheye, which is not normally how I like to use these, but I'm working in this kind of crazy environment. So I'll make sure it's kind of doing what I need it to do. I need it to show you guys everything. And it's, you know, on your head. You can't really tell what it's looking at. It's actually very, if you never worn a GoPro on your head, it's Surprisingly not looking at what you think it's looking at. It's not looking at it the way you think. It's like, put the GoPro on your head straight like that. It's actually, it won't record what you're looking at. You need to actually angle it down if you're kind of looking at stuff down or you need to angle it up if you're looking at up stuff. So right now I'm kind of up and down with a little everything. So I gotta be kind of aware of what's going on. And I'm doing a lot of rambling, I'm sorry, but just put the bracket back on and uh, this faster back up. Shit. Right. Okay. Zip this guy out of here. Oh, okay. Put it back on, back on. There we go. Right. So, we're going to go zip, zip, zip. Done with the, this guy, done. All right, now, you get your flathead screwdriver. Don't need this huge one. I'm gonna tension these cables, they need to be tight. All right, so you're gonna wanna turn this guy where the cam part's facing up. Okay, 
Get your cable where it's riding in one of the channels. All right. And this is already loose. You're gonna pull and tighten it. The cable. When you pull, it's gonna tighten it, and you're gonna tight tighten it down. All right. So it's nice and tight. It's in the channel. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want to make sure that both sides are are kind of tight. Okay. And then you're lined up here. Tighten this guy up. Right. And bam. Okay. Now these things I'll let you know right now. These things are labeled left and right. If you, you know, get them mixed up on the floor or something like that, or take them apart. Just thought I'd, I'd say that. But that's labeled. These are not labeled. All right. Go to the other side and we'll do exactly the same thing. Come over here. All right. Put it in the channel. Tension into the cable. It's, like it's hitting something here. Okay, that's not good. <clears throat> Pull the slack through. Turn her a little bit. Okay. Where I want it. Some more. Now you might want to use some pliers to do that. See the tension pretty much the same on both sides. Tighten it up. You can do some crazy thing like this. Get it out of your way for a little while. All right, now you need to know how to kind of wind this thing up. Now it's, it's kind of loose. Hopefully that does work. I think I might need to pull that a little bit tighter. What do you think? I think it'll be okay. All right, so you want to wind this guy up. Same thing. Um, make sure that that's up like that. And depending on how big your garage door is and how much it weighs in the instructions, okay, or even on uh, the garage door, like mine had these tags that are hard to read because people who build my house suck. They got paint all over it. Okay, I'll actually tell you how tall your garage door is and how many turns. You need to turn that spring, you need to preload it. It says it here in the instructions with these guys too, which is pretty cool. Okay, winding springs, okay, and it tells you the uh, height and how many turns, and it can be off by plus or minus a quarter turn. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Make sure I'm recording right. Get my phone over here. Sorry about this. Let's try not to fast forward, you know, hopefully uh, keep you entertained enough. Kind of tricky with videos like they're really long, but uh, the springs themselves, 5.8 socket, and you're gonna wanna, this is what I'm talking about here, I can't see what I'm doing. You're gonna wanna mark, okay, so you know how many turns you're going, so like that's one, okay? And basically what you're gonna do is on right side, you're gonna go counterclockwise, on left side you're gonna go clockwise, okay, to wind up the spring. So we're gonna start on the left and we're only gonna wind it up three turns. And if you look at the chart here, it says that I need to do 16 turns. So I'm only gonna do three and then I'm gonna go to the other side and do three because you want everything to be absolutely even with the garage. All right. I'm sure these, oh man, this is feeling a little, a little loose. I'm gonna have to fix that. Yeah, way different on that side. That's 
not good. can I think that if this isn't really very tight that you'll have to do a little more turns than maybe than the instructions say like it says 16 I might have to do it 17 times one thing I will tell you is don't over tighten them by too many turns like don't go over three or four turns like if it says 16 don't do 21 turns because it will break the spring <clears throat> don't ask me how I know that okay well, the way I know that is that I actually only had one spring broke. The spring wasn't broken at all. And it's that spring right there. And I actually turned it a couple more times, trying to figure out which spring was broke. I was, I was actually, actually adding more tension. I made it about three turns and it freaking snapped. You could hear it in the tube, kind of do its thing. Okay. So just be really careful. All you need is a ratchet again. Up in the upright position okay and really all you got to do all you're going to be doing now is turning uh so left side you're going uh clockwise okay so go over here put it back on the deal there's my mark okay and all you have to do is turn it clockwise and you can hear it ratchet so i'm looking for my mark that's one two three okay and then i'm gonna go other side and do three also and that's it i'm gonna go back and forth till i reach 16 plus or minus a quarter turn depends on how the garage feels when i'm done if the door is lighter right now the door is mega heavy and those springs make the door lighter so on this one Looking at counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is, and you'll know you got it because this thing's gonna go do what it's doing. So that's one, two, and three. Okay, total of 16 times. So I'm gonna do that, cut the video off, and then uh, see what we got at the end. Actually, I'll show you one more time. So you don't have to rewind the video or anything like that. Just hit that thumbs up button for me, please. Okay, clockwise. Okay, clockwise. One. Two. Three, and go back to the other side. I forgot to mention, you know what I forgot? I forgot a step actually. You know what? You, you need to secure the garage so it does not lift up, okay? So, so you keep tightening these up, supposedly this will um, start lifting the, the garage up. So you wanna do it like I totally missed that. I'm supposed to use like channel locks or something, but it doesn't really work on this style. Go ahead and jam a screwdriver in there on both sides. Okay, I'm sorry I forgot about that. I'm glad I didn't turn the video off. Hopefully you didn't skip that step. You didn't skip through the video. But that's there for you. Well, that's more attention to that, man. Let me see. There we go. Yeah, definitely get some pliers out. Okay, make that thing tight. So I'm already six, 
six winds up on this one. Three on the other side. I need to redo that again. Hope you didn't skip through the video. That's actually pretty tight right there on that one. Hope you're watching the whole video. <laughs> Sorry. This is my second time doing this. I just wanted to get it over with. Make sure it's 100%. There we go. I got as tight as I can. That one's pretty good. All right. All right. Good. Good with that one. All right. And then do three on that side. Counterclockwise. And then back to the other side, and that's it. All right. Here's my mark counterclockwise. We got four, five, six. Okay, and what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go do a nine, seven, eight. And nine and go to the other side and make this crap even. Over here, I'm just gonna go right to 12 probably. So clockwise. Yeah. What is that? Seven. Eight. Nine. 10, 11, and that's 12. So when you're done winding, down, and then down on this side too. And then you're gonna wanna lift up the garage to see if it has any assist. If it's assisting you, you did it right. But my garage door opener's in the way, I'm gonna have to move that thing out of the way. Bada bing, bada boom. And then lift up the garage. Oh, take the screwdrivers out. Oh, there we go, one. Uh, trying to cut your finger off too. What kind of assist you got? Should have got my phone real quick. What am I looking at? Look at what I want to look at. Let me see here. Hell yeah. Alright, we're good. We'll check again. Hit the thumbs up button for me, please. Uh, lift it up. It's still pretty heavy, but you can lift it before. You couldn't lift it at all. And so get this all hooked up. Get that hooked back up. Everything looks good. The little, I call them paws, whatever, are down. Cable's where it needs to be. The tension's okay. Check the other side real quick. Door moves freely. Same thing, paws down. Tension. A little more tension on that side than on this side. It's kind of loose, but. So look, it works. Fingers crossed it's gonna work. Ding. You guys take care, be safe, have a great weekend. Later.